Hey, I'm Caleb with Maine's Woodshop, and welcome to the third installment of my Wood Species Basic series. The goal of this series is to help new or aspiring woodworkers to better understand different wood species and what they might be in for when they decide that they want to gravitate towards incorporating different kinds of wood species into their projects. Very simple, basic stuff without a lot of complicated woodworking -y jargon thrown in. And today we are looking at poplar. Poplar is a really cool wood that comes in a whole variety of different colors. Poplar is technically classified as a hardwood, although physically it's not that hard. It's more dense than, say, pine, but it's still soft and susceptible to scratching or dents when you're working with it around your shop. I kind of like to call it the forgotten hardwood. Most woodworkers leave poplar in the dust for other woods like maple and walnut and cherry and oak and all that other fancy stuff. Poplar never really has its time to shine, which is kind of a shame because I believe poplar grows primarily around like swampy marsh areas and so it gets a lot of like minerals absorbed in with its nutrients which leads to a wide color variety of poplar. You can see just by looking at it that poplar has a pretty straight, smooth, open grain right here on this this board you can see that it's got a lot of this green character going on before fading out into a creamy light tan color. Not only does poplar have this greenish hue or that light creamy color, but it comes in a ton of color varieties. It isn't really a subspecies of poplar, it's the amount of minerals that it's absorbed into its trunk. You can find poplar that's dark brown to a purplish color, and it'll have streaks of purple in it. If you go to buy poplar and you just dig through the bin and you're looking for boards with a lot of character, they're not hard to find. There's even a more expensive poplar you could buy that's called rainbow poplar and it kind of has all those different color variations in a single board. Really interesting, although that'll probably cost you a little bit more than just regular old poplar wood. Let's talk about some commercial uses for poplar. So primarily it's going to be used for pallets, crates, upholstered furniture, a lot of secondary surfaces, and it's actually used a lot for guitar bodies, usually solid body electric guitars. Again, it's kind of a shame because it's not used in guitars for its looks. It's used because it's a cheap hardwood and it's usually veneered with like curly maple or some other kind of really fancy hardwood. And that's a shame because if you really give Poplar a chance, it's got a lot going for it. The light creamy color and the grain it might pass for a substitute for maple. If maple happens to be a little too pricey for you, you could try to pick out all the lightest boards you could find and use that in your project rather than maple. It could kind of be the poor man's maple, maybe. Poplar is about just as widely available as oak and pine. It's priced pretty modestly for a hardwood. It's cheaper than oak. While most of the time it's more, a little bit more expensive than pine, I have found poplar boards that are cheaper than the same dimension premium pine boards sold in big blue and orange box stores. Cheap and widely available for hardwood. Poplar is a very friendly hardwood to work with. It cuts easy, it is not aggressive or hard on, on your blades and tools. In my experience, it doesn't burn very easily, which is nice, especially the lighter colors. It's a very good wood for a beginner to use because of how friendly it is. And it has a very interesting smell when you're working it. I could see how there could be people out there that might find the scent pleasant. I personally don't really care for it. I don't really know how to describe it other than sort of like a, a bitter grass smell. It's like spice for the nose. Now, are there downsides to poplar? Again, like I said, there's probably downsides to just about any wood that you're going to use. I don't really have anything negative to say about poplar. If I had to throw in some cons for the sake of this video, I'm really grasping at straws, but really, the only thing that stands out in my mind is the fact that poplar takes a bit longer to sand because it tends to kind of leave a fuzzy surface even where you might normally would stop with your sanding and call it good. So that's a thing to keep in mind when you're working with poplar. Time for my project suggestions for poplar. Keep in mind, my project suggestions are not the word of God. It is it's not a definitive, this is what you should do or shouldn't do. This is just my opinion on what I think suits these woods best. Uh, for poplar, I would say just about anything. 
My main choice of use for poplar would probably be smaller decorative items. I think poplar looks good mixed with other wood species. I made this wooden wallet using poplar and purple heart and I think the two actually complemented each other very well. I've used it with walnut before and it worked well with that so poplar actually plays nice with other species and while usually it's used as a secondary surface, maybe say drawer runners inside of a cherry cabinet where you'll never see them, it's a little bit of a shame because poplar can complement other woods well and it can even work pretty well on its own. It makes for good decorative boxes, it works well for shelves. I believe poplar is also fine to use for furniture. Take this end table I made for example. I made that all with poplar and even though poplar is a bit on the softer side, I've never had a problem with that denting or scratching, especially after putting on a protective clear coat. I really think that poplar should be given its chance to shine because it's kind of a shame. Whenever it's usually used in a project, it's kind of hidden away for some kind of structural integrity or in like drawer runners or upholstered furniture where you'll, you'll never see it and it actually has some beautiful grain that it can offer your project. So maybe the next time you're going to pick up maple or cherry, maybe check out the poplar instead and you might find that it'll work quite well for the project you have in mind. So how do you want to finish poplar once you've built your poplar project? Well, really I find that just about any finish suits poplar well. My go-to finish for most things is spray lacquer and I've gotten pretty good results on poplar. It takes oil just fine. I really think you could probably finish poplar with just about anything, whether it's wipe on poly, shellac, brush on lacquer. Uh, there we go, that is my take on poplar. I feel like this one went by a little quicker than the other ones because really there isn't much I, bad I could say about poplar and unfortunately it just kind of gets left in the dust and forgotten about for other hardwoods. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a like. You'd subscribe to this channel too because aside from these wood species basic series, I upload brand new woodworking projects every single Friday and I have a follow up to those projects every Wednesday with my brother. More wood species to play.